I just want to say something simple with you tonight that might seem contradictory. Um, this is when Gary asked me a couple of months ago to share with you tonight. I'd like to talk to you about two things. Um, first one is dream big and act small. That might sound strange. To dream big and act small. I'll, I'll try and explain what I mean. This is an oak tree. Depends how you look at it. It's an oak tree. The purpose of this oak tree is that it will live for a thousand years. That's a long time. Everything that it needs to live for a thousand years is contained in it. All the DNA. Its purpose is to live a long, long time and fulfill something really, really big. It has a big dream. Right now it's just a little acre. I picked it off the ground just this morning. But when it gets planted in the ground, it'll take a root. And once it takes a root, you'll never get it out of the ground again with an oak tree. It's there for good. And it'll grow, it'll grow, it'll grow slowly, it'll do small things each year, it'll grow. And in 40 years' time, it'll produce its own acorns. And it'll do that for a thousand years. It has a big dream, this acorn, doesn't it? And everything that's in it to become that oak tree is there already. It has a big dream, but it's acting small. Do you know something? God, I'm sure you've heard today and I'm sure you've heard it before. God has a great purpose for your life. Let's never forget that. God wants you to dream big. Because God has a purpose. He'll work it out differently in our lives. But God has a purpose. And through the Bible, when you read the Word of God, you'll find the Bible talks about a purpose. In Acts chapter 13, it says about King David, who lived a thousand years before Jesus. It said he served God's purpose in his generation. And then he died. He served the same purpose that you serve and I serve today. It's the same purpose. Hebrews 6 tells us that God has an unchanging purpose. And that he wanted to make it so clear to the inheritors of everything he promised to Abraham, the unchanging nature of his purpose. God is working at the same purpose in your life and my life as he did in Abraham. It's the same purpose. Incredible to think that God does that. Romans 8 tells us that every one of us has been called according to God's purpose. God's purpose. God has called every one of us here tonight to his unchanging purpose. That's why we're here. That's what this is all about. That's the big dream. But what is, what is God's purpose? Well, you can express it in many different ways, but the Bible expresses it right on page 1 in Genesis chapter 1. God's unchanging purpose that we're involved in is simply this. He says, let's make mankind in our image and in our likeness. God's unchanging purpose that's never affected by anything is that he'll fill the whole world, fill the whole earth with a people just like him. It's simple, isn't it? Very simple purpose that God has. And if you understand that's what God has called you for, doesn't matter who you are, no matter what area of life you're in, God has called you to that unchanging purpose. That's why you were saved. Yes, you were saved to get your sins forgiven, to get out of hell, it's a real place, to get into heaven. That's great. But that's coming in some years' time, but you've got a life to live on this earth first. And every one of us has been called to the big dream that God has for you. And whatever world you're in, because we live in different worlds. Some of us in the world of education, entertainment, science, whatever it is. We all live in different worlds. But whatever world you go into, and you've heard different worlds today, whatever career you choose, whatever skills you have, whatever interests, whatever ambitions you have, whatever role it is, 
You're meant to dream big. You're meant to see your life, whoever you are, whatever you do, whether you're a teacher, a dentist, a postman, whatever you are, housewife, student, anything. God wants you to see your life within that one great purpose, filling the world with Jesus. That's why we're here this morning. As we in my house, we'll serve the Lord. That's what it means. To fill the world with Jesus. That's why God has called you. He's invited you and I to take part and be involved in his one unchanging purpose. That's the big dream that God has. Now to fill, fulfill the big dream, you have to do small things. And that seems to be the contradiction. But that's what it's all about. I want to just say three things with you that I'm learning about fulfilling that big dream in my own life. And the first thing is this. If I'm going to go from the acorn to the big oak to do the small things. The Bible says, be faithful in small things. That's what Jesus said. He said, if you're faithful in small things, then you'll be faithful in big things and you'll get more responsibility. If you're faithful to the Lord in the ordinary small things of life, He'll entrust you with more and more and more and more. We live in an age of instant celebrity. Everybody wants everything now. But Jesus says this, be faithful in the small. Be faithful in the ordinary. Don't be frightened of doing the ordinary things. Do the ordinary things well. Be faithful in the small things by being a servant. Just serving. Not getting ambitious for yourself, but just saying, Lord, I'm here and I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to do whatever you ask me to do. Be prepared to do the insignificant things. I love it in, in Acts when Paul had been shipwrecked and he was the apostle, he was the big guy. And when he got onto Malta, the very first thing he did, because everybody else was cold and wet, he built a fire for everybody else. He wasn't, he wasn't above that. Don't see that you're above anything. Nothing is beneath you. If you understand that God's called you to a big dream, then you're prepared to, you're prepared to do the mundane and the ordinary. Why? Just because you're being faithful to the Lord. Whatever you do, just do it to the Lord. Don't worry about anybody noticing that when you lie in your bed at night and just say, the Lord say to you, thanks. Let that be enough. Second thing is this. Whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. I've been a Christian for a long time now. I got saved in 1966 when I was really, really young. And this is one of the things that I've tried to get right in my life. That whatever Jesus tells me to do, just do it. It's very simple. That's what happened at the wedding in Canaan, remember? That uh, when the, the wine ran out, and Jesus' mum came to the servants and just said this, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And Jesus came up to them and said, boys, I want you to fill the jugs to the brim. Very simple, very simple. Fill the jugs to the brim. You know, what's the deep theology of that? Fill the jugs to the brim. He just said, do what I tell you. And you know what happened? Incredible moment. It was the best wine came when Jesus moved in on the situation. Whatever he tells you to do. Today I know, as you've been listening, Jesus has been telling you. He's been saying, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Do you know what you're going to do? Just do it. Just do it. Guaranteed success. If you just do what Jesus tells you to do, guaranteed success. Third and final thing is this. Finish what you start. So many people today start something and they, they just don't finish it. Start a great project, start a great idea, and then somebody else comes along. They get distracted by that. Or they make great promises that they never fulfill. Jesus wasn't like that. Just before Jesus was crucified and the same on the night before he went into the setting and prayed this, he said, Father, I've completed the work you sent me to do. I've done everything you sent me to do. 
And then a few hours later, he hung on a cross, and then you could say this. It's finished. I've done it. If you start something, if you give your word, and you start out and do something, see it through. The worst thing is when an acorn doesn't fulfill its destiny. I see thousands of them around my home. And I pick them up and I think, if I don't plant this, it's not going to fulfill its destiny. So I want to encourage you. Get planted into the big dream that God has for your life. I guarantee, whoever you are, if you're alive, you're in this world today, you're part of God's great big dream. You have a unique part to play. He loves you. And he has a unique part for you. I grew up around this area before this was ever a building and before that was ever a hospital. No idea that my life meant anything until I met Jesus. My life took on a whole different meaning because I realized Jesus had just saved me to heaven, which I am so looking forward to. But he has a plan for my life now. And then to achieve the great big dream, act small. Be faithful. Do whatever he tells you and finish what you start. Thanks for listening. God bless. Have a great evening.